Inspire, motivate, challenge. Thank you, Mr. Larry Bale. Thank you. Should I call you Mr. Larry Bale? Whichever anything you want to just call me LB. Are you still pharmacist Larry Bale? I'm still pharmacist. Okay, no problem. Uh, so welcome uh, to Healthcare Soldiers. I'm pharmacist Larry Bale. I'm, uh, I do, but, but okay, you are interviewing me like a pharmacist, <laughs> but I'm an academician. Yes, I know. So, <laughs> so right. thank you. Welcome to Healthcare Soldiers. Um, so I just wanted to start the conversation by you just telling us about your career, your educational background, where you studied, and all the professional endeavors that you've undertaken and what you currently do now. Okay, thank you, Mayowa. Um, I went to Amadou Bello University, courtesy of Mr. Niyo Yipo, who happens to be a pharmacy student, and we were living in the same house way back then. And so I studied pharmacy because I was uh, significantly inspired. He's been my mentor now for decades. I was inspired yeah, by him. He guided me, prepared me. Uh, he saw the ground. He was also the bridge that was used by God to help me enter into the pharma industry in 1981. My interest in academics, which I finally found myself, was actually lead and significantly influenced by one professor, Gabriel Oswede, who happens to be the dean of faculty of pharmacy in ABU in the 70s. Um, professor Oswede speaks with such great level of eloquence and humility. You already know he's one of the most respected professors in Nigeria. Eventually, he became the NABDA DG. And so when I joined Pfizer in on August 3, 1981, I joined with the objective to work in the research and development unit of a big pharmaceutical company. Mm. Uh, I, I did not know that R&D was not so developed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and having been significantly inspired by pharmacist Neo Yipo, who at that material time was already in Glasgow. Um, I enjoy my career promotion in Pfizer because virtually every year, every other year, I, had, I was being promoted. Uh, I played up to 12 different roles within a period of 25 years in the pharma industry. Uh, uh, finally, I left Pfizer in 2006, November. Uh, at the point of leaving, I wanted to start to pursue only things that I'm passionate about. And I happens to be passionate about teaching. Mm. I'd become a part-time teacher, uh, being used by consultants for keynote, I mean, for keynote speaking, uh, come and speak inside a major uh, retreat by some of the learning and development organization. Teaching was the most attractive thing to me and so when I found an opportunity in 2003, I joined Business School Netherlands from Foundation as a part-time set advisors to coach while I was still running my career in Pfizer. So, but eventually, by 2008, I joined as the dean uh, and indeed the CEO to run the Business School Netherlands in Nigeria. Sorry, you said in 2008? Yes, please. But you said you left Pfizer when? 2006. 2006? Yes. Okay. When I left Pfizer in 2006, November, I spent the 2007 to 2008 to set up a consulting firm for myself called okay. House Consulting. Okay. Um, and essentially, House Consulting focused on business transformation. Agile business transformation. So we have organization to to transform culture and it really be transformed processes and the way they do things in order to accelerate their growth mm. towards their vision and mission. 
Thank you, sir. So, Thank is there any? Did you work anywhere else between Pfizer uh, and BSN? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, I, I work. Well, I, even though I joined Pfizer in 1981, August 3, in 1983, I left Pfizer to do my MBA. Oh, okay. And that time, there was no part time MBA. Oh, uh, so like uh, uh, Yes, yes. So while I was running the MBA program, I worked for another company briefly oh. called Sharing AG, okay. Sharing Germany, uh, where I sold a number of. Uh, um, reproductive health products okay. and and then i came back to pfizer after i completed my studies mm. as a rep and okay. uh, and then i had my career path growth i served pfizer at different times as um, research and promotion as a rep okay. uh, i first of all work in the plant the earlier time i was there i work in the manufacturing in manufacturing then I work in virtually every department of the last part of the management training. Okay. I ended up as um, an associate to product managers in the office um, before I eventually became a rep. Then as a rep, I grew as a rep to become a research and promotion officer in 85. Then I became product manager in 86, became group product manager in 88, became marketing manager in 1990. Um, became market manager specialty products in 1993. Mm -hmm. Went to France to work in 95. He became a director in 96. Mm -hmm. And became acting country manager in 97. Okay. And then under the new Pfizer Specialties Limited. Okay. And from there, my role as a director started expanding to beyond Nigeria to English-speaking West Africa, to English-speaking and French-speaking West Africa, to English-speaking East Africa, and eventually to Central Africa. My last role was more of somebody who was driving marketing activities across 32 countries mm. as a general director. So that, that's how my career evolved. But along the line, Pfizer did something great for me. They spent a lot of money training me. Mm. The, not just me, but virtually people at similar levels like me at different times. I was uh, subjected to extensive training on marketing in Portugal in 1987. Subjected to extensive training on marketing in France. Went to Harvard Business School for training. Went to University of Columbia for training and there were couples of different training that endeared me along the pathway to academics. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to lose the, uh, the glamour as well as the money that comes <laughs> with working with Pharmaceutical <laughs> Company. So when I was leaving Pfizer, I, I was keen on finding my way to something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was what took me eventually to, uh, since I'd started like a coach for the business school, Netherlands way back in 2003, it was not difficult for me to, to just ally and to face it. All right, so I, I will get into BSN a yes, little more later, but I just want to just in your career in the pharma industry, are there any, um, were there any specific low points because you've talked about a lot of the advantages that you gave me. and the high points okay are there any low you know points you want to share with us i i rather than call it low points i call them the learning points, the learning points. Okay. in some of the learning points i had and, and this is learning from something that others would have considered a low point mm. I was made a marketing manager in, I'd been a market manager in 1993. I, I was, um, the, I, I was, my role was readjusted, mm -hmm. still maintaining my position as marketing manager, but I was responsible for only 40% of the business. Okay. The other 60% was given to somebody who was formerly my subordinate. Mm -hmm. You would call that 
a major career low point. But for me, it's a major career learning point for me because it, it created a zeal in me. Thanks to my team then who work around the clock. And, and when I see they were working 72 hours per day, I'm not in any way exaggerating. Mm. They were working around the clock. Within three years, our contribution moved from 40% to 61%. Our profit contribution moved to 75%. And I think that laid a foundation for the people in New York to look at what is happening in Nigeria. Mm. We were growing far faster than the totality of the business and the industry. And that would have laid the foundation for my movement to the board in 1996. The second low point was in 2004 okay. um, that where I learned that different people will show up in your life as divine helpers mm. for a reason, but it's usually for a season. So when their interest is, when it comes to their self-interest, they'll be willing to sacrifice you. Mm. in order for their interest to be protected. I learned that in 2004 in my career as well. I um, also had another career learning point at the point of my exit in Pfizer. I realized the fact that the only loyalty you can think of is the loyalty from your creator. <laughs> and when I exited, from Pfizer to pursue a passion in teaching, mm. it was considered a mad choice. Because many believe that it would have been better for me to remain in the pharma industry, to have my own brand, to sell my own brand with the same level of zeal. But I was, I, I was interested in pursuing a purpose that was clear in my mind. I wanted to make a contribution to humanity. I wanted to make a contribution to raising <clears throat> the knowledge base, the awareness that each and every human being, we already have great potentials in us. And when it is, when it is unveiled, we can, we, we, can, we can be such a great blessing to many people in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do something that will become much more fulfilling rather than just pursuit of money and glamour, which I had in Pfizer. So I, I think those are the three major career learning points for me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You said something that's uh, interesting. You said you mentioned loyalty. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I've had many conversations with people in the industry about loyalty. Yeah. Like, there's a, maybe a perception that just, I, I don't know if that's exactly what you are saying, okay. but maybe that loyalty is not something that we should focus on, especially in the recent times. Yeah. So I, I, would you agree that there was a lot of loyalty in the industry back in the day as, as to now? For, 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 for my yeah. generation, working for the same organization for over two decades, mm -hmm. that was a strong loyalty. <laughs> wow. Then two, the, the loyalty I was talking about was slightly different. Okay. When you see people that you you hired, and because there was a change in the top leadership, you see them just adjust mm -hmm. their for pecuniary gains. They they can even go out, some can even go out to tell false to, to tell lies, move out of ethical boundaries. Mm -hmm to say things they are not supposed to say about you. And that was a career learning point for me, that there's no absolute loyalty from any woman being. Mm. That what happens usually is that people use you when they like you, and when you're no longer useful to them, they dump you really. Mm. So that was the kind of loyalty I was referring to. Yeah. <laughs> but, but generally speaking, uh, it was, not common uh, at that time uh, to see people leave maybe after two or three years. It was just a common thing for people to work for the same organization for a longer period of time. So, 
career loyalty to the same country was also higher there than it is now. Yeah, but what's your thought on that? Like for maybe younger professionals now? For, 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 for me, um, I, I do have this discussion at times with the next generation after me, and that is, wouldn't it have been better for me to have worked in five different industries within 25 years instead of working for the same industry for 25 years? And I would say yes. I've seen people work for different industries and has paid off very well for them mm. in terms of uh, facility. And particularly if, the, if their desire is to end up in consulting like mine, it gives them a bigger level of horizon. Mm. But in my own case, the reason why, the reason for leaving one company for the other most times was to have an expanded role or a higher role, which I was enjoying every two, three years. I had no reason to really move. And I was having great fulfillment. I had great supervisors, great coaches who allowed me to stand on their shoulders to be able to shine. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I'm eternally grateful to them. So I, I would not say this is the advice for younger generation. I think each person has to carve a future for himself based on, I, I was enjoying the training. And so I didn't see any reason for leaving. I, I, I got a job at one point for an international NGO that paid me six times my salary, but I did not leave Pfizer. Mm -hmm. and, and that was considered to be absolute loyalty to the company, <laughs> particularly at a period where the company appears not to be celebrating me. But I stayed because I, I was deeply enjoying the challenge that was thrown at me by the company, by Pfizer then, and the need for me to turn around ethical business. That was the point of a career learning point for me that I said, I felt somehow why should I now be handling 40% of what I used to handle? Mm. But I turned it around to be a challenge that I needed to overcome. And it, when, I, when, when the business contribution moved to about 61%, I had great fulfillment. Remember, moving to 61% was not done alone by me. Yeah. It was done by people working in the team. In fact, in the, in the third year, when I was away in France, they continued with that vision. They bought into the vision so much mm -hmm. that they were the people who actually moved it from 56, which I left it to 61%. And, and that, that to me was also a learning loyalty that if your team is extremely loyal, it doesn't matter that you are there or not. That's another learning point to show that, you know, there are people who are extremely loyal to the cause of the company and they will do everything possible to make you shine. So there's no achievement that I have that it's due to my, me working alone. It has to do with teamwork. A lot of people believed in what I was trying to pursue and who gave me all the encouragement during the low times mm. to, to, to help me just keep the morale up. So.